you can use here. It's uh, an interesting list of functionality. So anyway, that's how loop works in the basics. Now, in loops have a, a special uh, property which, uh, as Newt said, uh, is a loop index. For instance, let's say you don't want to randomly spawn your sprites, you want to make a grid of sprites. To do this, to do this, uh, the common uh, pattern is to do a double loop, a loop for the rows and a loop for the columns. So you usually do a loop for x from 0 to 10, why not, and a loop for y which is in sub event. Actually, usually you do the y in the external loop because you do the first line, then the second line, etc. And then here you create your sprite. Uh, create here. You create your sprites, and to spread them in a nice grid, you have to access the index of the loop, which means um, if you loop 100 times, there's a special keyword which tells you when you are in your loop. If it's the first time, the second time, the fifth time, the fiftieth time, fiftieth, fiftieth, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, this keyword is loop index. That's the basic keyword. But as you can see, we have two nested loop. And uh, the problem is then the loop index refers to which one? By default, the loop index keyword refers to the most inner loop where the action is. For now, just use the second way, which is using the name of the loop. So let's say I do this. That won't work like that. The formula is a little bit more involved. But that's the basic of um, how to use loop index. If I launch here, I will just have a square here because I need to. Uh, uh, it's just it will distribute the sprites one pixel by one pixel since it's a loop index and here it's a position. I have to multiply by let's say 32 to spread things apart but I think yes it will work so here we have 10 by 10 a grid of 10 by 10 objects separated by 32 pixels and since the the origin point of the sprite is in the middle, it's a little bit cropped on the side. But that's the example of how to use something a little bit more complicated than a simple repeat. I can uh, offset the position by 100 and the x and uh, let's say 50 in the y and you'll have a clean grid like that for now uh, is it uh, okay does everyone understood uh, what i just explained here Yep, it's okay with everyone. All right. So, um, that's basically how you spread apart sprites on a grid. Now, 
the thing you I want to insist because uh, it eluded me for a while is these things will happen instantly even before the first uh, rendering the first display of the result you will never be able to do something progressive with that you won't be able to sh to see the the loop itself um, creating one by one the sprite it will happen in a, in a, in one tick so yeah you ha you reach here here it will run 10 times and inside it it will run 10 times as well so it's 10 by 10 cycles inside in uh, if i simplify okay so this is understood now keep the loop i will go back to looping i want to uh, explain something more i will uh, just uh, check uh, what i wanted to do okay so second thing i want to explain is the ace what is called the ace uh, the AC stands for A C E stands for action condition and okay I messed up this, this thing and E no not event but expression. It's uh, the AC. I want. I almost want to add another uh, letter, which is the P, because there's also properties. So, an object. I will uh, repeat what I told you last time. An object come from an instance comes from an object type which is made from a plugin the ACE the actions condition expression and properties are described in each of these plugins you have here the properties are what you have here a sprite plugin gives you an animations properties a size property initial visibility this and this there are common properties here that is given to every drawable object every object drawn on screen angle uh, opacity position these aren't really a uh, property of the plugin the behavior effects are instance variable are anyway properties are what you have here and almost uh, most of them are given by the plugin you have here now in your uh, plugin other things are given to you which are conditions you can access here it's all the um, things that helps you control the if or the when aspect of your programming if my object does uh, is uh, here or if my object is visible or if my object is playing uh, such animation <coughs> or is on such frame etc the conditions are for that then you for each plugin you have the action so for the condition I access it through the condition part of the event and for the action I access it through the condition the action part of the event so you have all the action you can do with the sprite plugin and then the th the thing that is a little bit more hidden 
The thing that is a little bit more hidden are the expression. The expression are what you can enter each time you have a field like that. Uh, set frame, for instance, you can enter an expression. And if you want to know the expression you have on an object, you can either, and that's what I do usually because it's faster, write the name of the object and just after the point, the dot or the period, you can see a list of all the expression the object have. So you can query the animation frame, the angle of the object, the number of frame in the current animation, the name of the current animation, the speed. We'll see all that next week when we'll talk about animation. But you can have all of that. We already saw uh, the unique ID uh, last time. And maybe the Witten height and surely the X. But yeah, you can s access every property of your um, object through expressions. Now, why do I uh, talk about uh, ACE now? Because you have to understand these ACE and at some point you have to understand looping to understand picking. That's where I wanted to go with all that. It's the picking. The picking, we saw that a little bit last time, is something that is specific to Construct2. Uh, it's not, uh, you don't really see that in programming language. It's, it's an uh, underlying mechanism that uh, works in C2 and it's added to the condition part of uh, the mechanism. In programming language, conditions are just to control the flow of your program, to skip some part or to enter some part, to execute some, to skip some, etc. But in Construct2, they are used as well to selection a set of instances. But it's not... Uh, how to say that? It's uh, really, you have to do it in some ways. In some other ways, you can avoid picking. Let me show you. <coughs> I want to, I will use the mouse plugin, which let me uh, know when the mouse is over an object, etc. I let you uh, explore this plugin. And if I'm on the object itself, if I over the object, I will change the frame. I will set the frame to green, I will change the frame, and I will set the speed to zero. So it doesn't change uh, automatically. Here, set frame to 1. If I do this, it will change the frame of the sprite. Here you can see, you can destroy the, 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 the one you have at the beginning to avoid this, uh, him to appear. Okay, so here it will pick only the object that uh, respond to the condition. But let's say you want to, if you are over one of the objects, you want to select every object. Here you can't. I'm over one, it's only pick one object. But at some point, I want, if I go on one, I want to make all my objects green. One of the way you can do, mm, I think, uh, yeah, there's two ways, but one of the ways you can do it is to use the pick all here. And 
if I go over one of the sprites, every sprite will go green. So you have some control over the picking. 